Nu ska vi bestämma jordens porositet. Och porositeten, det är hålrummens... The porosity is a volume fraction of the holes of the total soil volume. We will now determine the porosity for three soils. I have three cups, one with rather fine sand, one with gravel, about one centimeter large stones, and one with a mixture of sand and gravel. I will determine the porosity by measuring how much water is needed to fill these dry soils to saturation. The volume of the samples is 300 milliliters. I start with the sand. Sanden här och ser hur mycket vatten jag kan hälla i i den. På lite här. One can see how the soil darkens as it becomes wet. Man ser hur provet mörknar här ansett och håller det blött. It's a little difficult for the water to enter since the entrapped air has to escape. Therefore, I have chosen cups of a soft material so I can squeeze them to help the air to get out. The soil is not yet saturated. We are in the unsaturated zone and the soil particles are held together by capillary forces. If I compress the cup slightly, I can hold it upside down. I add a few more drops. When the soil is unsaturated like this, there is no reflection of light at the surface. As soon as the soil gets saturated, the small capillary surfaces between the soil particles become filled and we get a smooth surface in which the light can be reflected. When you dig a hole in the ground, you can clearly see when you reach the groundwater. As soon as the reflection of the sky is seen, you know that you are in the groundwater zone. Now I've filled the hole, and 90 milliliter were needed to saturate this 300 milliliter soil sample, giving a porosity of 30 percent. The gravel is easy to fill with water, since the air can easily get out. Luften har lätt att åka ut och vattnet rinner fort ner mellan de stora konen. Så här mycket. Även den här har... Also this soil could take 90 milliliter, giving the same porosity, 30%. Now I take the mixture. Och grus. Ser hur det går. As for the sand, it's not so easy for the water to enter. The soil is now saturated. Och 70 milliliter were needed giving considerably smaller porosity, about 23%. Let's open the bottom and see if we can get the water out. I open the bottom of the sand cup. A few drops are flowing out, but the majority of the water stays in the sample, retained by capillary forces in these rather small pores. For the gravel, you certainly guess that the water easily can flow out, which is also the case. Almost all water is flowing out. The majority of the pores are so large that very little water is retained by capillary forces. When I take the mixture, sand and gravel, a few drops are falling at the beginning, but practically all water is retained. 
It's the small particles that give small pores, determining the water retention. These large particles do not affect the pore size. Water in the soil is held by two forces. It is held by capillary forces that develop in the contact between solid material, air and water by the surface tension. It's also held by adsorption directly to the soil particles by strong molecular forces, creating a water film with a thickness of a few molecular diameters around each soil particle. In these coarse soils, this gives a very small volume of water since the total surface area of the particles per volume of soil is very small, both in the gravel and the sand. But in a really fine-grained soil, like a clay, a considerable volume is held in this way by adsorptive forces. The capillary forces are, as I showed when filling the soils, quite strong, holding the soil particles together. It's because of these forces that I can turn the sample upside down without making the sand falling out. And it's because of them you can build sand castles at the shore. Och det är de som gör att man kan bygga sandslott på badstranden. 